All right guys, we've got a handful of projects to tackle today. We're gonna to start with what I think is the most important one, the one I've been putting off for such a long time, but we're in dire need of doing it. Garage lighting, da da da. Let me shut the garage door so you can see just how bad it is currently. Yeah, this is what we're working with right now, and this is with light coming in from the window. Garage light on, which doesn't stay on all the time unless you keep pressing the button. And my super bright Milwaukee underhood light lighting up my workbench area, which I'm super impressed with that light. I actually picked up a couple of, uh, a couple of other Milwaukee lights. I got this uh, headlamp and a rechargeable flashlight. These are both just USB rechargeable. I think it uses uh, micro USB. Comes with the cords and everything, and I got a little power bank, which is in my truck. I'll show you guys that at a later time. But really nice setup. This thing's super bright. Has a bunch of different brightness modes, but I really like the uh, color of the light. Instead of it being that blue, which I think these are kind of bluish, which I don't really care for. It's like the same white color as that. It just looks better, I don't know. It's like warmer. So the problem is while that Milwaukee light works great, it is not meant to be just sat in a fixed area. It has a rechargeable battery that I charge with my little charger. You know, it's meant to work on cars like under hood or underneath or whatever. It does the job, but we need to do like a more permanent lighting upgrade in here. Because we plan on putting a window AC unit in here so that well, on the hot, hot days, we can keep the garage door shut, air condition the garage and work in AC. Budget baller garage, if you will. Like that's kind of what we're going for here. So as you can see, it is quite dark in here, especially like over in this corner, over here. It just looks like dingy, dungeon-like. Ignore the couch, we gotta put that inside. We, our friend was uh, throwing it away and needed someone to come pick it up. So here's what I got. I ordered these off Amazon. It came with, uh, we have six of these lights here. It's supposed to be like, 1100 lumens, uh, 2200, might have been 2200 for everything because this isn't super bright, but let me turn this one off. It's not dim though, I mean it'll work, six of them will be plenty and it was 50 bucks for all six of these. They come with a cord for each of them if you wanted to wire them all individually and then they have these little connection cords so you can connect them together. I don't know why they made them so short because like in the product picture you see them staggered like one, two, three, like this way. But with these cords you couldn't connect them unless you just made your own. So I think we're going to run them like this. So I'm thinking start with one right about here, you know, kind of the edge of the workbench. Do one the same direction, just, just further down. Then at the end of that one, 90 degrees that way. One more and then two back. So it'll make like a U in this shape. And this is pretty much the main area of the garage we work in anyway. Almost dropped the light. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So it comes with these little clips. Uh, it looks like one screw goes in each of them. These weigh nothing. So I can see why that would make sense. So we're gonna put the clips on the light right here, hang it up, mark where the clip should go, and then just all the way around. I would only try to make this nice and artsy, but I where the neon is. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, really good. Let's see what time we're at. Eight minutes to mount one. The rest should be really easy though. Yeah, it's gonna take longer to mount these than it is to swap the coil over to the other. Right? Well, yeah. So there's numero uno. And you're gonna go two. Oh, bet throwing the shade. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, and then we'll actually be able to plug it in right there, which is ideal. Oh, and we have a three-way splitter thing. Cool. If only we had a ladder and not just this uh, chair fed. That's a ladder. <laughs> It'll work. One step to success. It'll do.
the it's like it's like a nightclub. You turn these lights off, you might scare the daylights out of me. Oh dude, we can still reach this, no problem. Yeah. Wow, lit. Dude, that's a massive difference. A lot more than I thought it would be. Yeah, you that's about a the game game. changer, dude. The game has changed. That was well worth all 50 bucks. Dude, this is so nice. You can see everything. Like, just kind of looking like you're taking something off of this. Dude, I can see what this motor's thinking. It's so bright in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though? I look at it now. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. This is normally even, even the this. amount of light that is. I mean, these aren't industrial, but they're pretty bright for being light duty. Oh my god, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's cracking steady dad jokes over here. Trey's not helping. Trey's not helping. Oh, I'm just, I'm so stoked on this. Like, look at how well lit this is. When I go to like take the motor apart, we're gonna test this out here in a little bit by doing the tie rod on the Miata and see how much light we have at night. They're easy to install too. We didn't they're have relatively. those anchors because they were so light. That is true. Yeah, they're very light. So. <laughs> oh, you got me so good. Man. Also, this is not a paid promotion. I bought these with my own money. I have no idea who the company even is, but I'll put the link below. They're pretty light on the wallet. To whoever, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. All right, we're gonna do some uh, garage cleanup. Done. Now we have a garage couch. Look a lot better. <laughs> it does look a lot better. Bedside is still a mess, but I don't think that will ever change. <laughs> My side is organized as always. I'm sure you guys saw this earlier, but I got a welder. As soon as Grafton gets here, we'll weld some stuff. I practiced a little bit. So I don't get to go all, get all you can eat sushi, bastards. I hate because you. Of your friends. Because of my friends, and you guys decide to go on the nights when I'm busy. We it that way. Can we go again soon? Yeah, most likely. I mean, this is the second time in three days that we're going. That's to accurate. Place. <laughs> uh, oh wait, Fed, can you move your car? Four. So I can get the Miata and pull it in here, change my tie rod. I did an angle meter here. Oh, hooray! Yeah, you were filming. I'm gonna cut that whole beginning part out. Don't worry. All right, dude, whip it out. And, uh, power. so cool in here with the lights because you can actually see it. Are you gonna hide that thing? Engelman, you're gonna have to move me. I have to cut so much stuff out. Stop talking. Stop talking, Engelman. Just kidding, that sounds mean. All right, we're gonna go eat and then I'm gonna come back and practice welding and show you guys how terrible I am. Thanks to Grafton for bringing me scraps because I ran out. I welded everything I could possibly find together. Grafton has acclimated to the drift sim faster than pretty much anybody else I've seen, except he stalled it. Still so full from sushi. And he stalled it again. Grafton, I'm trying to fill the clip here, buddy. So he needs like 20 more horsepower. Actually, I just need to learn how to drive it better. That's accurate. Oh, oh, oh! Nice! Oh, so close. All right, guys, so uh... All right, I'm gonna practice some welding real quick. Um, 
All right, I'm gonna practice some welding real quick. That's making fun of me. So I finally picked up a welder. I'd been looking for a while and I looked at like a bunch of different new versions, like new welders that I was considering getting and compared them and compared that to getting a used one and all this stuff and finally settled on none of those options. I got this one from Harbor Freight. Again, no affiliation. Uh, it's basically a clone of the Lincoln 210 MP and the Millermatic like 215. It's a multi-process. So I can do a MIG, I can do stick and then I can get a torch and a pedal and do TIG welding, only DC, so no aluminum, but it's pretty cool. You can set up like, you go back here, oh, I've selected flux core, you can select whichever process. Then you select your wire diameter and then your material thickness. So we're welding thick stuff, so we're gonna go to 10 gauge. And then it auto sets the voltage and wire speed for you. From what I've seen, there's like, the as far as choosing, at least with flux, choosing the material thickness like when you go from 10 to 12 I think it stays the same and then there's no 14 so I don't know if that's just with flux I hope that's not that way with MIG but regardless it's got like infinite uh, voltage and wire speed control so it's nice and you can see them when you adjust them you can like see where it was I'm just turning it way too fast you can see like that white lines where it was it's pretty cool I've been practicing on uh, flux wire I'm gonna get a gas bottle so I can do MIG. But for now, I've just been playing with it and relearning welding. I did, I welded a little bit like five years ago, maybe like two or three times total, just enough to kind of get the concept down. But that was five years ago and I totally forgot. So I had to relearn it, but it's been really fun. I'm like way too hyped on having a welder. And this lighting, I can't get over this lighting. It's so ridiculous how much better this is. Like if I need to go work on something, I can see. Like I don't have to hold a light over this anymore to see what I'm doing or for you guys to see such a worthwhile garage upgrade let's again look at what it used to be like in here oh my god oh well that lights off okay so that makes more sense still big difference settings were way off on this first one. I think it was like too hot and too much wire speed because I had to move really fast. This one seemed closer to the right settings, but I just didn't do a very good job. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But that's going to be it for this video. Uh, just a fun day of getting projects done and whatnot uh, before we get started on the Miata. I've been trying really hard to get everything really well sorted here in the garage so that whenever I do the Miata project, it is as easy as possible and comfortable as possible. As lame as that sounds, it will just prevent me from having any excuses and try to hopefully keep me motivated. Like working within this light and actually being able to see what I'm doing is gonna be such a nice change. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Say bye, Fed. Bye. Just kidding, video's not over. We're doing a little project on Fed's car to help hold the valence up. We're gonna weld a couple pieces on. I'll show you guys when it's finished. So real world application. And then I did some more practicing. That's a decent one right there. There's spatter from all these others that got covered up. And then this one's not too terrible. There's like some other decent ones on here. I'm still not super consistent. Like you can see different size gaps in the beads and stuff, but we're getting there one step at a time. Well, we got one welded on, one tacked on. Uh, when we went to weld the other one, I just ran out of wire and I don't have any more wire. So this will have to be a project to be finished another day. Okay, that's that. I just wanted to show you guys a couple little things real quick. Say bye, Fed, again. Bye.